Hello, my name is Taylor. I'm a financial coach. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the calendar, use the calendar feature inside Monarch Money. A lot of my clients who I help uh, set up their Monarch Money create a budget that's going to be realistic for real life. Uh, we are also, we're not really using the calendar feature too often, just to let you know. Um, it's a really awesome thing that you can get set up. It is optional, but I don't think it's a huge game changer as far as um, the way, if you're, if you're setting up your budget correctly, um, hopefully the timing of bills will not be uh, something that you have to stress about. That is the purpose of getting this budget kind of created uh, so that you don't have to be worrying about the timing of paychecks, timing of bills, and worrying if there's going to be enough money in the checking accounts. Like we want to get you out of that habit um, and out of that process. If we can, of course, that does require an emergency fund and some cash savings. And so sometimes it takes a while to get to that point, but that is the goal. And so, but the calendar feature is a really nice feature, but it can be really confusing. So I want to walk you through some step-by-step -step processes on getting that to uh, get you some real data so you can very, in a very satisfying way, see everything on a calendar when it's coming up when it's coming due and how much it is all right so to start we have the reoccurring section here and this is where you're going to see a calendar layout now if you clicked on this for the first time it's going to ask you if you want to do this manually or if you want to have monarch pull in everything that it's seeing is reoccurring most of you will probably pick the pull in everything and it gets messy like if you act if you went to the grocery store um, every Thursday, it's going to show up your grocery store as a reoccurring transaction, which is not the case, right? Um, it can get really messy and it can also pull in um, subscriptions that you haven't paid for in months. And so there's a lot of things you have to do to start cleaning this up. So first off, just to let you know, the green means that it went through just fine and it's the exact dollar amount that we were expecting. The yellow means it went through, but it was a slightly different dollar amount than expected. And sometimes that's okay, especially with like utility bills that are fluctuating, it's gonna be a little different. So you can set the dollar amount but it will probably fluctuate just a little bit. Chipotle probably is not an every month expense unless you happen to be going every Tuesday, but you probably don't want it to show up in your calendar. And so what you can do is you can click on these three little dots right here and you can mark the merchant as not reoccurring. Once you do that, it'll take it off of this calendar. So if I go ahead and click this, um, it will remove this from the calendar. <clears throat> it'll also remove it from the list down here. Um, that it's pulling up uh, for all of your expenses. You'll see the accounts, how much, and you can edit these things. Now, when you edit the merchant, um, you can set it to uh, the frequency. So if you have a bill, like a, an insurance policy that comes out every quarter or every six months, you can do that. You can do twice a month, you can do multiple times a month um, or whatever frequency that you need for that bill. Um, you can set the frequency. Um, it's an expense, um, not an income. So you can put your paychecks in here if you'd like. Um, and then make sure you put the starting date. So whatever the starting date is, that's where it's going to show up on the calendar. Uh, so normally just when you set that up for the first time, that's the starting date. Uh, and then make sure the amount is correct. All right. And so you can also click um, active or canceled when, when you don't want that to show up anymore. So you'll go ahead and press save. Um, and that will save in the calendar and will show up at whatever frequency you need. So again, Exxon, probably not a reoccurring one. You might be getting gas every Monday, um, but it's not necessarily a bill, so maybe I don't want that on there, so I'm gonna mark it as not reoccurring. Now, to mark a merchant as recurring to get it on this calendar, there's a few ways to do it. I recommend just finding the transaction. You can just add it here, but it can get a little wonky because you have to manually um, uh, make sure you have the correct merchant and it's just a little bit easier to make sure the merchant is exactly what it says it is when it comes through. And so if I was going through my list of uh, transactions here, you'll see this little icon here. It's telling me these are already on the recurring calendar, so I don't really need to do anything about those ones. Um, but let's say I am, let's find one here. Um, when I, we're just going to pick a random one, even though this is not realistic. So let's say I'm on a coffee subscription. I'm spending $5 a month on coffee. Um, if I wanted this to be a subscription, if I wanted this to be marked as reoccurring, all I have to do is click on these three little dots right here and mark merchant as reoccurring. So when I do that, all of Starbucks is going to be marked as reoccurring. Now you can see the problem is like, hey, maybe I'm on a monthly membership. I wish they did that. I'm just kidding. No, I don't. I hate memberships. But uh, <laughs> let's say I have a $5 a month Starbucks membership. I get a free drink. But I also go to Starbucks to get other things. So I don't want every single transaction to show up here. So if it is just the one thing, it's the one subscription, there's no other charges, um, great. You can, mark it as re um, you can mark it as recurring, select the frequency, the expense, what day it is, how, how much, and press save. Once you do that, and let's say I just do that right here, so I'm just going to go every month. Once I do that, it's going to show up on my calendar now as recurring right here.
All right, on the 5th, I think I put it. Yep, right there. But you'll notice I also had a transaction on Friday for $5. So um, maybe this is my subscription and maybe this is me just going on a one-off occasion. And so here's what you would need to do in order to make that work. So the merchant name is what is uh, causing the, the it to go on the recurring calendar. And so what you would have to do is you would have to create a rule to change the merchant name. So for example, um, in for let's pick the let's actually go into your transactions and pick the one that is um, that is your uh, consistent subscription. So for me, it was the Starbucks that was on the February, okay, February seventh. If I click this, um, I am going to okay. Actually, sorry, no. We're gonna go into your rules. Um, so you need to go into your settings. Uh, you need to go into rules, and you need to create a rule. And so if the merchant is uh, Starbucks, and you have to make sure it's the exact name, if there's anything weird going on when it says it, you need to make sure it matches Starbucks. Um, if the amount is exactly $5, because that's the amount of my subscription, my monthly recurring subscription, uh, then I want to rename the merchant. So if I rename the merchant, I'm gonna rename it to uh, Starbucks subscription. So you would want to do this for like, if you have a phone bill, right, that's coming out monthly, but then you get charged maybe a quarterly service charge. It's probably gonna be the same merchant, but only the phone one is the recurring maybe, or maybe you want two different um, charges. You want one that's a monthly and one that's a quarterly. So same with your insurance policies. If you have a same, like, so if you're working with State Farm, maybe one of your policies are going out on a monthly basis, one of them is quarterly. You would have to change the merchant name. And I suggest you do the rule so that this actually does this automatically. And so if I change this, and sorry, you have to press save. So Starbucks subscription. Um, and let's see, uh, then it would, then that would work. So now the problem is with this one, because in this demo account, all of the Starbucks charges are exactly $5. Um, so generally when I go to Starbucks, um, other days, it's just going to pull in on Starbucks. It's not going to rename this, but if I were to do this, apply it to whatever, you know, months that you want, if you want it to back do the last few months. Um, and if I press save on this, which is just in the corner here, um, it's going to rename that Starbucks to be Starbucks subscription. And then you would have to go in and change. So when it says Starbucks subscription, you'll have to change that merchant to reoccurring. The Starbucks subscription is reoccurring, not just Starbucks. And then that way you can actually differentiate when you have multiple merchants that are pulling and sometimes they're monthly, sometimes they're not. Uh, this is a great example for like Apple charges. Some of your Apple charges might be apps that are one off. Some of them might be subscriptions. And so you would need to go into your settings and set a rule so that if uh, you get an Apple charge, that is, let's say the 9.99 cents or whatever, that is for the um, uh, storage or whatever. Let's say 2.99, I can't remember exactly how much it is. Small amount though. So if you get that monthly storage cost, then that is going to be renamed to, let's say, Apple Storage. And so when you create the new merchant, Apple Storage, it's going to always say if the Apple comes in and it's $2.99, then it's going to rename to Apple Storage. And then you can say Apple Storage here as the recurring calendar. So then you can go into Add Recurring, you can add the transaction manually, and you can go type in Apple Storage. And that way, all the other Apple charges when you're buying an app or something will not show up in the calendar, only the ones that you have set um, to be renamed as Apple Storage. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to show you in this demo account. Uh, so again, you just have to change the merchant name, make sure you set a rule so you don't have to do it manually every time. But the merchant is what is uh, driving what's going on this calendar. Um, the merchant names do not matter. You can change those as much as you need to. Don't stress about it. Um, it, it can be changed. Uh, it, it does pull in automatically, um, but sometimes it pulls in a little funky, so you might have to change it. Um, if you're paying for something in cash or, or like a Zelle, you can do the same thing. So um, when if a Zelle comes through and you're paying, let's say, $200 for like a house cleaning or something, you would want to rename the merchant um, in your rules section. You're going to um, go to merchant if it says Zelle and if it is the $200 a month that you pay for house cleaning, um, you would rename that to, um, you could say Zelle house cleaning. So then you remember that it's still a Zelle, um, but you can put that in here. So when I create that, it's going to change all Zelles that are equal to $200 as Zelle house cleaning. Now you can see like, hey, you might have a Zelle at exactly $200 for something else. You just need to make sure you rename the merchant when it comes through. If it's not Zelle house cleaning, then just go ahead and change the merchant name at any time. If you see it come through and you're like, hey, that was for my friend, you can always just change the merchant name. Just change it back to Zelle. 
um, no stress there. You can just type, you'll just click on the merchant, type it in, make, create new merchant as Zelle. This one's new because there's not a Zelle connected to this demo account. Um, but you can just do that and change it as, as needed. So I hope that helps. That is just the basis of the reoccurring. And again, remember you can always click on this little carrot next to any of your transactions and add them or delete them from the uh, recurring calendar. You can mark it as reoccurring. You can mark it as not reoccurring. So example, the loan payment, that one's not being marked as reoccurring right now. Um, so we want to make sure that is. So I'm going to mark it as reoccurring. And this is something that's coming out monthly. So every month this expense on that day and we're good. Now, again, remember you'll notice that um, you'll be able to see past subscriptions or if it's a little off, it'll warn you. So like, let's say your Verizon charge was a little bit higher. You set it to 32, but it's 140. And it looks like it's been 140 for a while. So what you would want to do is click on these three dots, edit merchant details and change it. So you expect 140. That way it won't keep showing up as 132. And then it'll be the exact amount when it comes through um, just like that. Same with Comcast. If you want to see like, hey, this was set to 106, but it's been 115. Looks like you need to adjust that. So maybe you can go in and mark this. This, what you do on this calendar has no reflection on your budget. If you don't have this in your budget, it's not going to show up in your budget. If you change the dollar amount here, it's not going to change the dollar amount in your budget. This does not have any connection to your budget. This is like almost a separate feature from in your Monarch uh, system where you can just see all of your uh, bills in one place, but it has I do not think, as far as I'm aware, it does not connect to your budget. So don't stress too much there. Change what you need to so you can see the calendar. Think of it as completely separate. Um, the budget does not change. All right, so I think that's about it as far as everything you need to know for the recurring calendar. If I missed anything, let me know. If there's something that's coming up for you uh, that you want to change, if you want me to review something, if there's a situation that you're saying of like, hey, this is so not working, um, let me know. And I'd love to dive deeper into this topic if it is something that you're struggling with. So. Um, if you're using the re -cal recurring calendar, let me know too. I, I again, like maybe like majority of my clients don't use it. And so if you're using it and if you enjoy it, tell us why, tell us, let's share your experience with it. Maybe I'm not using it to its fullest extent. Maybe you're saying something that I should be using it for. Uh, let me know, but thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave comments, like, and subscribe, and I will uh, see you guys soon.